In wounds, we all know in wounds that the, the, the longer you give those bacteria, the more tissue they destroy. As my partner, Dr. Randy Walcott, likes to say, time is tissue. More time, more tissue loss. This is a 400 pound diabetic on the lateral side of her heel. The wound communicated all the way through the bottom of her foot. This is just loaded with bacteria. And the reason why she has a hole in her foot is the, is the bacteria. We, the studies are there to show the greater the volume of bacteria, the slower the response to healing. My business, though, is growing fastest in ear, nose, and throat. ENT doctors use it for chronic sinus infections, chronic ear infections. We also do a lot of urology studies for prostate and for UTIs. All right, for bone, uh, podi and pedi uh, pediatrics, or correction, uh, podiatrics with, oh, sorry, Dr. Uh, Lavery is uh, well known. He's at the University of Texas. He did a study with us comparing bone samples and diabetic foot osteomyelitis. One sample went to the culture lab at UT, one went to us. The cultures in eight out of the uh, 34 samples were no growth, nothing came back. We found microbes on six of those eight samples, and in anaerobes, they missed pretty much all the anaerobes, which is classic, and you probably look at all your CNS reports over the years, the amount of times you get anaerobes back is probably very, very limited, and few and far between. So again, if you, want to, if you want to know what's in a bone causing that osteo, sending it to us, you have a higher probability of actually identifying the species. And talk about wounds, because we all know wounds have bacteria. We have skin, which is our barrier, but once the skin is ruptured and bacteria begins to move into tissue, it's not doing good things. There's no commensals in, a, in terms of that environment. You don't have a, a, an epithelial cell layer that's you know, not damaged. So, you don't have commensals. All bacteria that move, once they rupture, once the skin is ruptured, move into tissue, they go into tissue, bone, and tendon, they're not gonna do anything good. If we're, if we're healthy and young, and, and, we, and our, we have a good immune response, we can overcome them, and we can go on to heal. But as we age, diabetes, poor blood flow, the bacteria take full advantage. And they form these collaborative communities, or biofilms, and they develop this matrix, this EPS around themselves, which really gives them their protective barrier. So when they land, they land in planktonic form, and they immediately form their communities, they build their matrix, and then they begin to send out new fragments to start the process all over again. Now the cornerstone, obviously, is debridement. You, when you cut into them, when they're curetti or 15 blade, you're disrupting them. They don't like it. But when you do that, you're removing them off host tissue. That host tissue is not, is not healthy. It's been damaged. It's literally having a parasite on it for, how, for however long. So when you take it off, one, you don't get it all. You miss one microcolony and it comes roaring back. And we've done studies to show that on how fast it takes them to regroup. And it's very rapid. Uh, and, and you also obviously don't have an electron microscope over your wound bed when you're doing your debridement. But you, again, you miss one microcolony and they come back. So this picture is staff. And this is what Coach back in 1870 figured out. Hey, I can grow planktonic bacteria on sheep's blood. What he never understood is that these bacteria don't stay planktonic or single cell very long. The faster they can get with their friends, their chances of survival go up significantly. So Staph aureus here is not the same Staph aureus when it joins its community or friends. And they're not, they're not like biased or, or selective in saying, oh, you, we'll keep out the fungal. Anybody can come into the community and they will literally become wired together. And they change their phenotype. So Staph here is not the same Staph when it joins its friends, it changes phenotype, it expresses different genes, it behaves entirely different, and it becomes much more difficult to kill. This is what is causing our chronic infections, whether it's a chronic wound, a chronic urinary tract infection, chronic sinus infections, they're all caused by these collaborative communities of bacteria. What we, Kosterton, who's the man who came up with the term biofilms, and is kind of the godfather of all this research with 700 papers, what he and other scientists figured out was that once they change their phenotype, if you go in there with your 15 blade and rip them out and go plant them on the media, they don't grow. However, if you rip them out with your blade or your, or your swab and collect them and send it to us, we're going to extract their DNA. So we're gonna tell you who makes up the community. Are they dominated by anaerobes? Are there gram negatives in there, gram positives? What is that community make up, made up so you can pick the right antibiotics? You still have challenges in terms of getting those antibiotics through that matrix, and we'll talk about that a little bit more. And this is a good example of that. This is a biofilm that Dr. Walcott grew in the lab and then soaked in bleach for uh, one hour. 
So all of you have used Dakins and or use, they use bleach to clean, you think, oh, it, it kills everything. Well, it'll kill pl planktonic bacteria. So if you put bacteria on this table and leave, left it in planktonic form and wiped it with bleach, you'd kill them all. You let those guys get together and form their communities and the bleach is not gonna kill them. The green is dead cells, the orange is healthy, vibrant cells. So it's the same principle that systemic antibiotics have. They, they basically are attacking the fortress, they'll kill the guys on the wall, but the core still survives. We also find in sampling techniques that if we run a swab over the top of the community, we'll find gram negatives and gram positives. If you take a blade and cut through it and send us that material, we find a lot of anaerobes down here.